let's talk about obstructive, obstructive shock. shock. So obstructive shock usually goes under the radar because you always got my attention talking about distributive shock like sepsis, cardiogenic, hypovolemic. But obstructive shock means that there is actually some kind of mechanical obstruction causing the blood pressure to be low. And when I teach this live in a board review or I'm on my videos on my website, beyondthepearls.net, I always will say that there are three main examples of obstructive shock. And what are those gonna be? Number one has to be cardiac tamponade, meaning that there is fluid in the pericardial space. And remember, when you get that fluid around uh, that myocardium in that pericardium, it's gonna squish the heart. So if someone comes in and they have very low blood pressure, or unfortunately, if someone has PEA arrest, pulseless electrical activity arrest, and you're doing CPR, not coming back, you always gotta think outside the box. And one of the things that jumps to mind is cardiac tamponade. And how do we diagnose that? Well, sometimes it's clinical, but if we have an ultrasound, you place it right over the heart, you can see that fluid around the pericardium, and I'll give you a guess. How do you help that patient out? What do you gotta do? It's not just CPR and epinephrine. It's all gonna be about draining the heart. You have to do a pericardial synthesis. What's gonna be another example? How about tension pneumothorax? So what does that mean? Is that you have a collapsed lung. How does a lung collapse? Well, surrounding the lung is a space called the pleura. And when air gets introduced to that pleural space and it can't escape, it just keeps on building up and up and up, it will collapse that entire lung. All of that air will build up in that pleural space. What happens to your blood pressure? It goes down. So the only way to bring up that blood pressure is to do what? You gotta relieve the tension. So of course, how do we do that? Well, and they always say that, take that needle, that needle in the second intercostal space. And of course, I always can imagine you're in this entire room, probably the ICU with people screaming and shouting. This patient's almost dying and they tell you to put the needle in there and you should hear a what? Shh. I can tell you one thing, you won't hear the shh when it comes out. You'll be lucky if you hear anything. But that's what you wanna do in theory. But the take home message is this, you need to put it in chest tubes. You could try a needle decompression, Easier said than done. Now they'll always say this to my fellows, that if you suspect the tension pneumothorax, and that's the key word, suspect, because it's an emergency. We don't always have a time to get a chest x-ray. So if you suspect it and you put the needle in, well, if you guessed wrong, and they didn't have a tension pneumothorax, well, they got one now. And now you definitely have to put that chest tube in there. And what is the last thing that will be an example for obstructive shock? Well, a massive, pulmonary embolism. So when we talk about a pulmonary embolism, they usually start off from a deep vein thrombosis, makes its way up, and it kind of gets this big clot lodged right in that pulmonary artery. And once again, that if you wanna help out with their very, very low blood pressure, well, it's gonna be more than just um, anticoagulating the blood with some kind of heparin product. You need to break down that clot. So we need to get to reperfusion. And what are the two ways we could reperfuse? Number one, medically. So if you have a massive pulmonary embolism defined as low blood pressure, you would give a thrombolytic to break down the clot. Now, if there's contraindications to give a thrombolytic, then you have to do a some sort of mechanical thrombectomy. I'm not telling you to go to surgery and crack the chest open, but nowadays, People from interventional radiology, interventional cardiology, they have so many gadgets where they can go in there and directly break the clot down. So once again, three major examples of obstructive shock, tension pneumothorax, pericardial tamponade, and massive pulmonary embolism. Those are gonna be my pearls for the day. If you do desire to seek out more pearls, please, Check out my website, beyondthepearls.net. We have this amazing quiz for the USMLE to see what type of test taker are you? If you wanna find out what study type you might be, you know what, take that quiz. Find out, I'm telling you, it's gonna help you out, organize your thought process, and eventually get the score you want on your board exams. And you know what, I'll see you soon.